Hi ninjas, and welcome back to another visual guide of Sekiro. In a previous video, we got a taste of an important mechanic of the game, the perilous attacks, which we will go through in this video. Mainly there are three main types of perilous attacks, but luckily there are three separate mini-bosses in the start that all teach the separate perilous attack. Later on there will be more different types of perilous attacks, but those we will go through once they become relevant in future guides. Now a quick note before we head to the guides. Before each boss guide from here on, I will post a list of recommended skills, prosthetic tools and items for that particular fight, so be sure to have them ready before entering the fight in order to follow these guides. Every fight can be won with just a sword alone, but prosthetics, skills and items make the fights way easier. The first mini boss we will find after we pass through the gatehouse with the dead Nightjar ninja holding the shuriken wheel. You see him standing in the opening area and guarding the other gate in front of him. As you move closer to him, he will recognize you as a hostile and attack you. This is the guide on how to defeat General Naomori Kawarada. You may notice that he has very familiar movements, as he uses all the same attacks as the tutorial mini-boss in the start, Shigenori Yamauchi. He uses the same swiping slashes and the jump slash, along with couple of new slashes and combos, but they are quite well telegraphed, so block the attacks to learn the timing and then try to deflect the next time. But he has one key difference which we will discuss in this video. Whenever he lets a roar at the same time he puts his sword on either side where you can see a shining glint in the blade, it means that he is winding up a swipe attack. This attack cannot be blocked or deflected, so it needs to be dodged by moving out of the way by either dashing away or jumping over the sword. Whenever an enemy uses specifically a sweep attack, they have a short period when if you jump on them and press the jump again as if you were wall jumping, you will stomp on them and deal a lot of posture damage. So be sure to jump straight up instead of a direction or you will miss the stomp window. When you land, you can do two aerial slashes that possibly deal damage or raise the enemy's posture bar. When you see Naomori gathering up energy around him, he will use a technique to restore his posture down dramatically. The animation lasts about 2 seconds and in the third, the posture goes down, so be quick and stay vigilant and interrupt him by attacking him. Now let's look at some tips and tactics. This is a very straightforward fight, where the timings of the deflections may take time to learn, but it might be good to first block the attacks and see their timings, then sprint away, recover your posture and then try to deflect the attacks when you get the hang of them. Stay near him, keep attacking until he deflects you, then deflect his normal attacks. When he does the sweep, jump straight up and stomp him, followed by two aerial attacks. If you run out of posture and stagger, be sure to roll out of the way and take distance with the dash button, as Naomori will try to use a grab attack if you remain where you are. If it seems you are having trouble, fear not, for a ninja is cunning and resourceful and utilizes his strengths against stronger foes. If you are hurt and out of resources, you can run back to the sculpture's idol behind and rest, resetting the fight and replenishing your healing gourd. If you are having trouble with Naomori, you can even the odds by heading left from the gatehouse before you enter the area, climb up to the ledge to the cliff and sneak in the crouching position on the rooftops to the gate behind Naomori. If he hasn't seen you, lock onto him, jump towards him and perform an aerial death blow on him. Now he's weakened and you can take him out much more easily. Congratulations, you are awarded with a Gord Seed and a Prayer Bead. Gord Seeds can be exchanged in the dilapidated temple with Emma to get more uses on the healing gourd and offering 4 prayer beads at the sculpture's idol will increase your maximum health and posture. The next boss we will be looking is at the Hirata estate, which you can get to after you pass Naomori, head left downhill to a broken house with a senile old woman who offers you a bell, which you can then offer up to a golden Buddha statue inside the dilapidated temple. This boss is Shinobi Hunter Enshin, who we will use to go through the next perilous attack, a thrust attack. You will have difficulties if you just run straight towards him in the clearing, as there are multiple bandits, two with torches and swords, one with an axe and an archer. The first one has his back turned to you, so you can kill him easily. The archer will most likely see you, but you can get behind the tower and wait for him to de-aggro you. Then sneak at the bushes and death blow the archer. Try to do this with the boss looking away. Then circle around yet behind the tower and climb up the tree on the right with the grappling hook. 
get into the bushes and kill the two bandits. Now you're good to challenge Enshin one on one. It is very visible that Enshin uses a large cross spear, so his attacks mainly focus on thrusting. The thing about thrust attacks is that they cannot be blocked, they can be deflected, but there is a lot easier maneuver to this. Whenever a thrust attack starts heading towards you, you can perform a Mikiri counter skill by dashing towards the thrusting weapon. Successfully connecting the Mikiri counter will make Wolf stomp on the thrusting weapon, dealing a lot of posture damage to the target. If Enshin is further away, he will start charging up a very heavy thrust that closes the distance very much. So even if it looks like he's far away, be sure to dash towards him for a Mikiri counter just in case. Enshin also has a mid-range thrust that he uses when slightly further away, but this he uses a bit more quickly as he doesn't charge it as much as the long-range thrust. The short-range thrust launches pretty quickly, and if it isn't Mikiri countered, Enshin will stab multiple times in a very quick pace afterwards, which needs to be deflected, or otherwise it will deal high damage. Enshin has multiple attacks that start with first sweeping with the other side of the spear until he uses the pointy end. With this, he can use either of the following attacks. He'll either stick you with the blunt end and do a normal thrust attack, or he will start winding up a sweep attack that will need to be jumped over, stomp on him to do posture damage. Now let's look at some tactics and tips. This fight is very straightforward with very little variables. Stay on the defensive, deflect attacks if necessary, and try to rely on practicing your Mikiri counters. Keep a bit of distance to make sure he does the long or mid-range thrusts for easier Mikiri counters. Attacking is not really necessary as you do more damage with the Mikiri counter and the stomp on the sweep attack. Keep this up for a little while and you should be done with him quickly. Congratulations on your victory, you are rewarded with the prayer bead. The last one is the hardest of the three bosses covered in this video and altogether a notorious boss in the whole game. As you look into the distance here in this place, you see this creature chained down who is not very happy about it. The guards down below him speak out a tip of a weakness that he has, but we'll get to that soon. For now, kill the guards and prepare for a challenge against a boss who will teach you about the last of the three perilous attacks, grab attacks. The Chained Ogre. When you approach him and he sees you, you have a few seconds to hit him freely with your sword, so use this moment well. Once he breaks his chains, then it's time to take a bit of distance. If you've ever seen pro wrestling, then you might recognize these moves. He has an elbow drop that is very easy and visible to see. This can be blocked, deflected, but I recommend dodging it since it takes a second for the ochre to sand up. Use this moment to hit him once or twice. Next up he has a drop kick that has a very far reach. This deals a lot of damage and pushes you back, so I recommend deflecting it. The ogre has a few kick attacks that are very tricky. The first he has is either a single, double or triple attack, depending on how long you remain next to him. If you stay next to him, he will first start with a sweeping kick with his left leg, then another with his right one, and last a front kick with his left leg. Deflect these or move out of the way. He can sometimes do the front kick instantly, so be aware. The ogre also has a football kick where he winds up momentum from behind. Now be aware that if you are somehow behind him, the hitbox will apply there and can get you caught with high damage. He also uses a double smash that's very easy to dodge or deflect. But now for the main thing the ogre likes to spam a lot, the grab attacks. As mentioned in an earlier video, grab attacks cannot be blocked or deflected. And if a grab hits you, you will automatically be grabbed into an animation. Each of the ogre's grabs deals so much damage that unless you have full health, you will die. If you die, the ogre will leave Wolf on the ground after any of the initial grab attacks. However, if you do survive, he will throw you behind him, so be wary that he doesn't throw you into the pit. If he does, don't panic, as you can see a grappling hook opportunity to get back close to the ogre, or to the branch if he throws you at the downside of the stairs. The ogre has three different grabs. The first one is a short range grab where he tries to grab you right where he is, if you're close to him, and do a pile driver. The second is where he starts to walk in towards you with his arms open and roaring. The last one is where he menacingly leaps towards you. 
Now for some tactics and tips. The Chained Ogre is very aggressive and is constantly on the offensive, so you have to play carefully and on the defensive. You cannot stay too close to him or otherwise he will most likely grab you. Bait him to make his move and move accordingly. He will most of the time try to grab you, so move out of the way, then after dodging, do a stab since it closes the gap very well. Now if you eavesdrop the guards before the fight, they said that anyone with red eyes fear fire. So if you use the flame bent prosthetic when he's not attacking at the same moment, he will be stunned by the fear for a few seconds, which allows you to hit him 4-5 to five times, after which you should take some distance again. After two connected flame bent uses, the ogre gets the burn status that will deal damage over time for about 5 seconds. If you feel like you need a breather to heal and gather up your spirit, you can always use the grappling hook to get up to the tree. If you find the two death blows to be too much, fear not, for there is a way. Earlier in the house behind you is a cliff that has three Gachin sugars. This trick works before the battle has started, so kill the guards, use a Gachin sugar, then crouch at the very right side of the stairs and walk up behind the ogre in stealth. Now you can get a free death blow if you are careful. Now with only one death blow left, bait the ogre to do his attacks, dodge backwards enough so that his attack won't reach you, do a stab and repeat this. Use the flame vent to stun him a few times, get close to him with the grappling hook after he has done his grab animation, and with the grappling hook attack get the two attacks and then take distance. With this he should soon run out of health and you can do the second death blow. Congratulations on the victory. You are rewarded with a prayer bead and a skill that boosts your healing abilities. Now as we move up to the gatehouse we will see the next boss, who we will cover in the next video. With these bosses down, you should have a pretty good understanding of the perilous attacks. Keep an eye out on the boss's animations on how they move to decipher what kind of a perilous attack they are coming towards you with. I hope this video was of help, leave a like if it was, subscribe for more, and if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, stay vigilant, and I'll see you next time. Fight, fight, fight if you wanna live long. Fight, 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 you gotta stay